Hey everyone, how are you guys today? I'm going to show you today on how to make um, a button card from a vintage bingo card. Now you can do this very easily with a, you know, a lightweight bingo card, not like a thick bingo card one that um, is too tough to work with. You want something that is going to be durable enough yet. So it's kind of like a cardstock, which I actually, that's why I have these because I love the uh, transagram kind of bingo cards. It's perfect, perfect weight for this. Uh, what's really cool about these bingo cards as well, either if you're just making a button card to do digital downloads, copy kind of thing, or if you're going to use them for, say you want to use it for a, a ring journal cover where you can get a second bingo card, put the rings right through, and you got yourself a journal, and the top of the journal will be like a, a bingo card that is a button card, and all those spots there will have a vintage button. So what I figured what I'll do in this tutorial is teach you how you can do it yourself kind of thing. Um, like I said, um, a while back, I had the packs already ready for you in the Etsy shop where you could choose your type of designs of vintage buttons and things like that. What's really cool about the packs I have in my shop is that I did not cut or put any holes into the bingo cards. The bingo card is whole. The buttons are in their own pack and um, the thread, spool of thread and the needle are in their very own pack, kind of separated. So hey, if you don't want to make a button card, at least you have 30 beautiful 100% vintage uh, buttons. You got an amazing spool of thread by Gutterman Thread or Gutterman Thread. There's, other, there's so many ways people say it. And uh, so uh, at least you know that you get a whole spool, which is a beautiful uh, quality of thread. It's it's 100% polyester. Polyester is my favorite thread to work with because it is durable. It is It's used for universal type of sewing and projects. It's just, I love the silky satin finish of it and how smooth it works kind of thing as well. So you get that, you get the uh, needle, and then you get the card, of course. And then pretty much, I'm just gonna teach you how you can do it yourself. Now you might have these products at home, so this video is awesome. You know, it's perfect for that. And maybe it might uh, inspire some of you to try to make a journal out of them. I mean. That'll be the cover, and it's got to be, wait to see it's all done. Um, it would just be kind of cool. I think it would be really, really neat, and I'd love to see if someone would do that. But, um, okay, so let me dig right in, and let's see what we have. So what I did is, in my Etsy shop, I had deactivated one of the listings, and I chose this one. So I'm going to start this off as if I just got this in the mail, and what do I do kind of thing. So I'm just going to open this up and try to work with one. So I'm just going to get one step ahead just in case. And um, so you're going to get a card like this. And the card measures, let's see here, um, the card measures a uh, four inch by like six inch, which is a great size and all. And then um, what I'm going to do is, so the next step I did was, um, well, there's different ways you could put holes in each and every one of those spots. What I did is um, my husband has this uh, drill thing that kind of he has in his workshop, but the card is easily to be poked through with an awl like you use or a nice sharp object or even just a really thick like say upholstery needle. Just poke the hole right in the middle of each and every one of them. So the next step I'm going to do is in your pack, you're going to get a cute little button pack and a lot of cute little things in it. The thread is going to match the theme of that. Again, I mean, it's like, I think it's 1,200 yards. I think it's in one of those spools. I don't remember. I gotta, gotta see here. 110 yards of thread, which is awesome. Perfect for your projects as well. And I'm just going to get this here and dump it in the ball. So the one I picked was rainbow. I absolutely love this one. It was so cool. So I'm just going to go through the colors and Go right through there and just kind of put them in each spot. This came with a cute orange. I'll just make a new pack and then let's put that into the new pack kind of thing that is a uh, rainbow as well. And uh, so the first thing I normally do when I do this, I have the thread, of course, and you un undo the thread kind of thing. I'm going to put my needle here. I'm going to weave it through the fabric so I don't lose my needle. You're probably going to wonder, you know, how much thread do I actually use to put this card together? Well, it's actually pretty rather simple. So... This is how I gauge how much thread I need to spool through the entire button card. So usually what I do is I take the thread. I don't know if you can see that okay. I had to 
picked burgundy just so I can hopefully show you. I'm just going to take the thread and go across to where the start and finish is of the card like that. So I know I need that much thread. I'm going to times that by how many rows I have. So that's two rows, three rows, four rows, five rows. And then what I do just in case, I add an extra row of length just in case I have to tie off somewhere. So wherever that ends, I hold it. And then I pull the thread and I put the two pieces together like this. I don't know if you can see it until I get to the very end to where they both match. And I kind of show you. Hope that makes sense to you. I'm going to do this to about right, about right there. So it's in half. I'm going to take my scissors, which of course I don't have right here. Let me press pause really, really quick. Okay, I'm back. And then I'm just going to take my scissors here, open them up, and then I'm going to clip that thread like that. So pretty much I took that length that I had and I folded it in half where I have two pieces together kind of thing. I don't know if you can see that. And then what I'm going to do is take them apart like this. And I'm just going to take that one strand, that one end, and grab the needle, which I did put into the fabric. Let me cut my scissors, put my scissors back. And I take that one end that's empty. There it is. I always lick my end and then I twist it. Sometimes it helps to get through the hole really easy. Of course, I picked a needle that was the hole is really not that uh, big. So I'm going to try to thread it right through here really quick. Hopefully you would think I would have like a side needle ready to go to make this easier. OK, I got it through the hole. So pretty much I'm going to take that together. I'm just going to spool it through until I get them side by side to the very, very end. I'm going to go all the way to the end where the two pieces are together again. All right, so I'm at the end, but I'm not going to tie the two threads together. I'm just going to take one of the threads and do a knot. I can teach you a very easy way to do a knot. Sometimes people get really confused on how do I do a knot. My mom taught me once as a child, and hopefully this will teach you, and hopefully the camera will show what I'm doing here. So I took the last piece of the thread, and I put it between my thumb and my pointer finger. And then I'm going to wrap around the pointer finger once, twice, and then I'll put my thumb on it like that. I hope you can see that. And then I'm going to twist it right off that finger and it's going to look like that and take the top and pull down and what do you know you got yourself a knot i have to try that a few times i remember as a kid i had to do it over and over and over but you'll get it so then i want to check my thread and make sure at least one of the ends is longer than the other it is because i don't want the two ends to end at the end you know together at the end so what i'm going to do next is i usually start from one end and go down and across. So I'm going to flip the card over to easily show you. I'm going to start from the back, the very first hole. And I don't know if you can see the holes I have there. I'm going to start the very first hole, put the needle through, pull it right through. Now there's different ways that you can keep that thread because that thread might fall right through, right? You can either clip it with a clip or you could take a piece of tape and tape it. But me, I'm just going to hold it down. I'm going to give it a little bit of length too because I'm going to end up here and tie in the very end with it. So I'm just going to hold it for now. So here's my needle. I'm holding that first one down. I'm going to find my very first button and then get started here really quick. Okay, I had to pause it for a second. I want to remember the sequence of things. Okay, so what I'm going to do is take the very first button that I have. And the very first button, I'm going to do the first row is going to be red. So I'm doing a rainbow style pattern going on here. And I'm going to start with red. So I'm going to go through the hole of the button, one of them, like that. Like this one has a double hole. Go through one until the thread goes all the way through, like that. I'm going to go through the second hole on that, that, that uh, button and go through that very hole that we poked through, right there. And then just poke it right through. Keep holding that thread in the back so you don't want it to go through. So there we go, guys. We got the very first button on the button card. So the second hole here, I'm going to come up through the bottom, bottom of that second hole and come right through there. I got a finder. 
I'm going to have to tip it and bring my needle right up and through. And let's get the second red button going on here. So let me grab the red button. Kind of makes you wish you had three hands. All right. So I'm going to weave it right through the very first hole, this second button. Now I didn't, I'm just hand picking buttons out of here. I have not really, you can lay out your pattern before you actually start this. Um, and uh, so you know which buttons and which ones you want in what hole, but I'm just going to grab them sporadically. All right, I'm going through the second button. There you guys go. We got the second button already done. So I'm going to go up underneath square 32 there. Since we're playing bingo here, go up underneath square 32 to put the next button on. All right, I'm just going to do that for the first row and then I press pause and then start the second row. So you kind of have an idea on what I'm doing. Let me get another red button here. I think I'm going to switch up the button and get this one here. I got this really cool round one here. It's really easier to get the thread right through it because it's got a, you'll see. All right. All right. So I'm going to thread it right through. Oopsie, where'd my needle go? All right. Here we are. He's going to be up there here in a second. All right. So, all right. So these will line up soon as I tighten them up. Um, as you go along right now, they're going to be loose because this whole row is going to be kind of loose until I finish it. All right, I'm going into square 47. I hope I'm not making you guys dizzy there. All right, square 47. All right, now that ball one will get tight as soon as I finish square 47. Let me go ahead and pick out a button here. I think I'll pick this one right here. I love vintage buttons. They are one of my loves. I love vintage items. Here we go. He's on there. They'll line up here at the very end, guys. Don't you worry. Get the next one. Now, see how I let go of that thread? It's because it's getting tighter. Of course, I'm not going to trust that it is tight enough yet. Oopsie. I did the wrong thing. See? Accidents happen. I want to go through that hole first. <laughs> I'm getting kind of rambunctious and anxious here to finish. All right. So patience. I got to go through this first. Lord have mercy. See, that's how we learn. It's been a while since I've done any kind of button cards. This is my very first time ever doing one on a bingo card, though. All right, here we go. Let's get that tight. Let me turn that around. Get that thread nice and tight, guys. Turn him around. See what's happening. All right, he's a loose one. I love it. It's cool how they dangle. I'm loving it. All right, up to the next one. I'm not even watching my camera to see if I'm even in sequence. I'm just having fun here. All right, let's go to square 63. I'm going to go up this button, obviously, and down that button like that and put it right on that square. And I'm not going to pull until I grab that thread on this very end here, just in case. You never know. All right, so row one is up and ready to go, guys. I'm going to go ahead and next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to turn the card like that to see exactly where, oops, I didn't get through that hole here. Just when I thought I got it right back through, I didn't. Let me get that right through there for you guys. Hang on a second. My needle, come back to me. All right. All right, so get the thread all the way through there. There it goes. Okay, I'm like wondering what happened there. And you're going to have moments like that because at first, the first row is always the one that is a little tough. So no worries. Okay, so back to what I was saying. I'm going to go back to this and see how tight it is. You want to make sure it's tight enough, but not too tight where that we don't want that thread getting through there yet. But it's just enough. So what I was going to do is the next step is to go to the square right below here. Let's go straight down to that next dot. It's almost like connecting the dots kind of thing. We'll bring him right back over. And then we're going to be on square 70 kind of thing. And then you're just going to work your way this way. You're kind of like weaving and snaking around from row to row. So this is a rainbow. So the next thing I'm going to do is orange, obviously. So I'm just going to grab a little bitty orange button here. This pack, they're all different sizes. So I'm going to go through the first hole, down the next hole. 
and poke right back through that 70 and pull that thread all the way through. Again, like I said last time, you go up and under to go to the next square. So we're going to square 49 right now, which I have to turn my thing over so I can see. One of these days, I'll start getting readers, but one of these days. So I weaved him up through 49, as you can see. Grab another orange button. This one has four squares, so it's kind of, you get more idea. This one had like a cute staple one in it. I'm just going to keep the original staple. I think it makes it kind of cute. I'm just going to pick two of the four squares. Now remember your thread, when that other second strand gets close to being to the end, you want to pull your needle out that one strand of thread a little bit because we don't want these to be doubled. We just want one single thread kind of thing. All right, so I'm just going to go through two of those four holes. I just need to go through two right now. I'm just going to go right through there. And that orange one is done. I'm loving that dangly one. It's going to be so cool. Now, if you don't want it to dangle, you could poke that hole deeper and push that, that piece. What's happening is it has like an opening on the back of that button. You can push it into that hole to keep it stiffer if you want to. But I kind of like the dangle. All right, I'm going up through 35 here. And you can do this with your own homemade cards. It doesn't have to be a bingo card you know, per se. Let's grab another orange. All right, I'm going to go up and over and in that hole again. Let me find that hole. And I hope I'm making this kind of easy. I'm taking my time going row by row just, just, just for that sake kind of thing to show you um, until you kind of get it. All right, it needs to be tighter once that last thread is done. I could tighten up everything. But try to keep the thread as tight as possible all the way through the process. Like this first guy here. He'll be tight as soon as that one thread is pulled and tied with the very last thread on square 75. Does that make any sense? Let me hold that thread. See how it still can make things loose? Okay, square 26. I'm going to grab this orange one. I need to go up and under first. This has two holes, which is nice. And under and over, and then stick it right in 26. Okay, I'm going to do square five, and then I'm going to show you one more time how to go to the next row again, just in case you forgot the first time. All right, up number five again. Keep it nice and tight, the string. Let's find another orange one. I'm thinking I'm liking that guy. He's cute. Keep him small. I like the small and big variations. Let's go ahead and put him there. Go to the second hole. And then I'm going to go through number five again. Number five. And pull that thread right through again. All right. That thread right around. Back around button. I think my button turned on me. There it goes. Okay, so what we're going to do is I'm going to hold that one thread, turn the card around to show you our system. I'm still holding this thread. Again, like I said, you can tape it in place if you're worried kind of thing, but I'm going to keep that in my hand for now. So what I'm going to do next is going to go down straight to this box and then weave right back over here going to kind of look like this and then it's going to weave right back over here we're kind of like doing a snake on you know like in all these different rows kind of thing so I'm going to go ahead to this row here down poke my finger right through oops my arm in a bend here like that turn the card over keep it nice and tight again and it looks like the next row is going to be green I'm going to press pause and I'm going to do the next, sorry, it's going to be yellow. And then I'm going to do green, and then it's going to be blue. So let me go ahead, and I'm going to keep going here. You could press pause and rewind, um, and rewind to figure out how to do the first steps again. But I'm going to continue on to the very end to tell you the very last step. So give me a second. Okay, 
I made it to the end here for you guys. So what I'm going to do here is I made it to the very end. I didn't tie off or anything. I wanted to give you guys a help tip, helpful tip. If you do not like dangly ones, make sure you pick buttons have, have flat backs. If you want it nice and tight, see how the ones that are flat back don't dangle at all? Just choose, simply choose the ones that are flat on the back. If you are making a book, maybe you don't want the dangly ones kind of thing. So make sure you pick non-dangly ones. Just make sure that they have a flat back. If that makes any sense at all. All right, I didn't tie off, but I'm still holding that first thread at the top here. I'm just going to turn that card right over and look at our work. See, it's almost like a snake kind of thing. So what I'm going to do is I'm still holding this thread here, keeping it nice and tight. So make sure this is all nice and tight. It is. I'm just going to weave. I'm going to show you what I'm doing here closer. I'm going to weave right to that last blue. I'm going to put it on, down here because I don't want the buttons to move. I'm going to weave under that last thread. I'm just going to weave underneath all those threads here and snake my way back to the top, to the very top one there. It's not going to be like any fancy dancy fashion or anything. Now mind you too, there's another thought I was going to tell you since I'm now thinking about it. Is if you want to double up the thread, so if you want thicker thread to tie these down, you can. Just do two strands. I just did one strand to give you an idea kind of thing and how that works. So let me turn him over here like this to make sure everything's tight. It is. I'm going to take that first strand of uh, thread and this thread, and I'm just going to tie it. I'm just going to move this guy. Look how much extra thread we got here. I'm just going to tie this into a knot. Nice and tight. Once or twice, which is fine enough. There's one. And then twice. And you can tape it down if you want to. You can mod podge something on the back if you don't want to see the thread, the leftover thread in the back, or how the button card looks on the back. I mean, you can take a second bingo card if you seriously want to. You could take a second bingo card for the back, put it right there, and take your sew machine and sew around the edge kind of thing. So there you guys go. And you could clip that thread right there if you want to. But wouldn't that be cool? I wish I had my sew machine out. I'd just do it right now. And you just stitch around the edge if you want to. Two cards if you like to. Um, after, obviously, after you've sewn it together kind of thing. So then you guys see no, see no, you know, work. And it probably will make it a little bit more durable for you, too, to put the rings through to make a journal. But isn't that cool, button card? I know I just did the rainbow fashion for you guys. At least now you know how it's done. If I would do this again, I definitely would pick the flat ones for sure. And if I would do it um, over again, I probably would double up the thread. Which, that is really nice because the thread you get in the pack has got plenty there for you to do. So And plenty in case you have another sewing project uh, to work with. I hope this inspires you to try something new. Um, you can get these in the Etsy shop. I think they're only $10, which is awesome because there you have it. It's all picked out for you. And vintage buttons can be really pricey kind of thing. And I already got, you can pick out your style. There's so many styles there at the shop. If not, do this at home. Um, and if you do create a really cool pack, why don't you post it in my Facebook group? Um, and so before I go, I just want to say, if you want to be part of today's giveaway, since you watched this video to the very, very end, and you know that this here is going to be given away today, comment down below one thing that you absolutely love about this card, um, and, uh, your opinion on what you would do. It would be awesome. Comment on something special, and don't forget the thumbs up, and, um, I'll put you into a drawing to someone wins this button card that I made today. Thank you guys for learning, and I hope this how-to video helps you out in some way. You guys have a blessed day. Bye, guys.